Welcome to day five of our 10 days of prayer. Our topic today is the obedient lifestyle and prayer, showing the importance of obedience when we are servants of the Almighty. And before we go into our subject, let's just say a quick prayer. Father in heaven, we need you now to give us more insights into your will. Please help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John 5 is 14, 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So the Bible says that when we ask according to God's will, then God will do a great work in us. He will hear us and he will answer our prayers. Now, the Bible says God's will is our sanctification. And sanctification is based upon our obedience to God in the work that he wants to do in us and through us. It's not dependent upon us, but we need to make the choice to be obedient. And then he does the work. So God has a great plan for his people if we pray according to his will. Now, the three angels has a call in these last days to obey God. In Revelation 14, 7, we read, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. So the Bible says we need to fear God. This is one of the final messages that goes to the world before Jesus returns. The Greek word here for fear means to respect, reverence, or honor God, meaning a loyalty to God, living a life obedient to God, living a life surrendered to His will. Obedience isn't always just keep the Ten Commandments, but it's also doing those things that God directs us to do to be obedient. For instance, when God asked Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh, God wasn't asking him to keep the Ten Commandments, like thou shalt have no other gods, etc. Yes, technically it comes down to that because Jonah put himself in front of God. But the point is, that was a request from God that Jonah had to do. And Jonah refused to do it. God is asking for loyalty in these days. God is asking for us to reverence Him, to honor Him, to show the world that He is God and that there's no one like Him. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So God wants us to obey Him. This is man's all. This is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. But we all have weaknesses. We all like to focus on these weaknesses, and many times this puts us down. Even Paul himself said in Romans chapter 7, 15, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate... That I do. And then verse 24, he says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Now I know you walk with God, you've experienced this. I've experienced this. This is not a nice place to be in. When you have made a mistake, you have fallen, you have done something that you said you wouldn't do again, etc. Whatever it is in your life. And then you look at yourself and you say, O wretched man that I am. But Paul gives us confidence. He gives us hope. He gives us the right answer. In verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's how we gain the victory. That's how we overcome in this life. It's through Jesus Christ. I make the choice. Jesus empowers. I don't have to rest on my own power, my own ability. I just exercise choice. Faith as a mustard seed. There's no power in a mustard seed, but it's the faith in a bigger power that then empowers me to move mountains. God wants to empower us for this life. The solution is in Christ. Not in the eternal life only will we have victory, but in this life. When we are weak, He is strong. When we don't see the light, He is the light. Signs of the Times, May 27, 1897 says, Christ's example shows us that our only hope of victory is in continual resistance of Satan's attacks. So we need to resist. We need to make the cho choice. He who triumphs over the adversary of souls in the conflict with temptation understands Satan's power over the race and has conquered in our behalf. 
as an overcomer, he has given us the advantage of his victory, that in our effort to resist the temptations of Satan, we may unite our weakness to his strength, our worthlessness to his merits, and sustained by his enduring might, under strong temptation, we may resist in his all-powerful name and overcome as he overcame. So in Christ we can do all things because he has already conquered. He's already done it. Now you and I can do it. How? By resisting, making the choice. And Christ's life will then be applied to mine. I will receive his righteousness. He will cover me with his righteousness and empower me. And that's righteousness by faith. And I can live this life because Christ lived it. So our prayer today is that God will keep us obedient. That God will keep us close to his heart as we make these choices. But it's still our choice to make. It's still for us to choose whether we are obedient or not. And God will empower if we make that choice. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what an amazing tool we have. That is to choose to live a serenity life. But we can only be empowered to live this life if Christ is in my heart and we are covered by his righteousness. Therefore, Father, we ask for victory in Jesus for what he has already done. I pray for every person listening that this would be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen.